Well, hello everyone. Dr. Nick Norwitz here, Martina's friend and soon to be co-author on our upcoming book, The New Mediterranean Diet Cookbook. But I'm not here to advertise the book beyond that shameless plug. In this video, I want to dispel the myth that saturated fats are categorically bad for you. And I want to start by reading a quote straight from the State of the Art Review by the Journal of the American College of Cardiology. Straight from the horse's mouth. And it goes like this. The recommendation to limit dietary saturated fatty acid intake has persisted despite mounting evidence to the contrary. Most recent meta-analyses of randomized trials and observational studies found no beneficial effects of reducing, reducing saturated fatty acid intake on cardiovascular disease and total mortality, and instead found protective effects against stroke. Basically, the more one examines the scientific literature on nutrition, the more clear it becomes that the common knowledge that saturated fat is bad for you is probably a myth. This myth originates from misinterpretation of a type of study called an epidemiological study, in which one looks for an association between two variables and populations. So for example, one could observe or look for an association between fat intake and the number of deaths due to heart disease. And if there's a correlation between these two variables, one could hypothesize that one variable causes the other, that saturated fat intake causes heart disease. But this is just a hypothesis. This sort of epidemiological association study can't actually show that X causes Y. It's just a correlation. Such correlations are typically said in science, correlations aren't causations. Such correlations can just be complete coincidences. So for example, there's actually a really great correlation between the rate of divorce in the state of Maine and the consumption of margarine. But I would never suggest that margarine causes divorce. Um, also, more importantly, Epidemiological studies, association studies, can be confounded by mediating variables. A really important mediating variable with respect to saturated fat is healthy user bias. So basically because most people think saturated fat is unhealthy, because they think it's unhealthy, those people who are more likely to eat saturated fat are also more likely to engage in other un unhealthy behaviors like smoking or being a couch potato. Furthermore, conscientiousness about health itself is strongly linked to better education and higher income levels, and more education and higher income levels are themselves linked to better health. But even if epidemiology could show saturated fat causes heart disease, it can't, but if it could, not all of it does. So the biggest and most diverse epidemiological study, called the PURE study, which included 135,000 people from 18 countries on five continents, found no association between saturated fat intake, and instead found that higher proportional intakes of saturated fat were associated with a lower risk of stroke. The randomized control trials, which can actually determine a cause-effect relationship, also don't show that saturated fat causes heart disease. Even back in the 70s, we sort of knew this. So the Minnesota Coronary Study, which aimed at showing substituting saturated fat for polyunsaturated fat would help with heart health, found no benefits for the heart. So Saturated fat doesn't cause heart disease. Next question, which in my opinion really should be the first question, what the heck is a saturated fat? So a saturated fat is simply defined by the fact that the fatty acid on the fat molecule, the fatty acid being like a little molecular tail, is straight and has no bends, or are straight and have no bends. That's it. So a saturated fat has tails that are straight. That is the definition of a saturated fat. The problem is that dietary fats vary in many other ways that are also important. So for example, these molecular tails, they can have many bends if they have bends, or they can have fewer bends. The placement of the bends can vary. The length of the tail overall can vary whether or not the saturated fat or unsaturated fat has bends. And all of this impacts how the fat is metabolized. So for example, um, the medium chain fatty acid such as the lauric acid found in virgin coconut oil has a completely different metabolism than the saturated fats found in meat and dairy, even though they're all saturated fats. So medium chain saturated fats, they skip the chylomicron party, they go straight to the liver, they can jump into mitochondria because they don't need the carnitine shuttle. It's all just a really wordy way of saying that saturated fats are actually a very diverse group of biomolecules. And in my opinion, the fact that nutrition labels dumb down nutrition to just total fat and saturated fat kind of pisses me off a little bit. But what does else all mean for you? Well, that's very simple. Meat, cheese, and dark chocolate are back on the table. But again, don't take just my word for it. The Journal of the American College of Cardiology explicitly agrees with me 
So go enjoy these foods. Have your ribeye. Have your cheese. I like Roquefort. And have your dark chocolate. Enjoy. Hi, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that video and learned something. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about who I am, I'd really appreciate it if you click here. It's a little documentary about my story. Feel free to leave a positive comment, a like, or your story if you have something you want to share. You can also check out our upcoming book here and um, pre-order. That really helps with the Amazon rankings and we'd appreciate it. Thank you.